So today's topic is three stages of creating any result, overcoming the war against creation, your morning ritual and review process. There's a lot. Basically, I was in meditation today <laughs> and I was like, oh, I should pretty much just share lots today. So I couldn't figure out which one I was going to do. So I decided just to put it all in and uh, it's going to be fun. So, so here's what's interesting. There are actually three parts to creating. There's germination, which is when you, you come up with the idea, you plant the seed. There's assimilation. I feel like I've got, um, what's it called? Uh, reflections on that. So there's germination, there's assimilation and completion. Could someone type that in? Germination, assimilation, completion. Germination is typically, you know, the seed, the idea gets planted, it gets started, it germinates, and then there's assimilation. It assimilates into what it's coming, and then it's completed. Now, uh, you know, the, the reason why this is on the forefront of my mind is I was, I was talking to a, a, an old friend recently, and uh, I haven't spoken to this old friend, I think, in four or five years. And it was obvious after talking to this person that uh, he is stuck in the, the germination phase. So I started talking to him, asking how he's going. And he first told me he's got this new business where he's got a, uh, a new invention that creates colloidal silver. Then he told me he's running another business where he's buying and selling um, trucks and caravans. And then he told me he's got another business that he's doing marketing for someone. He explained to me that he's going to, which would have been yesterday or, or my, a few days ago, he's going to meditate for 22 hours on the 22nd of the second to raise awareness for his other product, which was uh, an acne uh, clearing product. And then he, he told me he also needed to get um, some money together because he's buying and selling some, some land uh, in, in Canada and he needs a thousand people to all give him uh, $5,000. So he has $5 million Canadian to buy all of this stuff. And it continued. It continued. All of these things were going on. And I sat there like completely overwhelmed, you know, going, wow. But it got me thinking, and, and I've, I've had many clients like this where, you know, you, you see in their relationship and they, they, at the beginning of something, it's very exciting. At the beginning, it's very exciting. Who's ever experienced this before? You start a new business, you start a new relationship, you start a new diet. At the beginning, it's exciting. It's exciting. Why is it exciting at the beginning? At the beginning, Whenever you're starting something, you're not really in the truth of it. You're not in the truth of it yet. At the start, you're in the romanticized vision of what it might be. At the start of a relationship, you haven't really met the person properly. You're still just so uh, excited learning about their family and, and who they are and what they like and what they eat. It's not really them yet. It's it's you and you've got a meta uh um, perspective because you've you also learn once you once you get through that well then then it's you and the person same with a business same with an idea at the beginning there, there's not really a lot of ways to fail when you're coming up with ideas you can't really fail when you're starting you can't really fail it's just it's just an idea it's a maybe it's possibility it's exciting and this is the germination phase and and I, I've had clients where they are literally in the germination phase in every area of their life. They have, you know, they go in and out of different relationships, in and out of different diets, in and out of different ideas, in and out of different projects. They've started a book and uh, thought about having a cafe, and they've got some music that they haven't finished, and they've got their foot in this, and they, they've got things that they don't they don't carry on. So so what happens? is that the germination phase is fun and exciting and there's low risk. There's low risk when you start. When you start in the assimilation phase, when you move into the assimilation, that's when resistance will be there. Now, if you think about it, you spend most of your time assimilating to the completion. So we have germination, assimilation, and completion. Who's experienced this? You're all excited. You get started with something and then it gets hard. And it's no longer the romanticized idea that you had. You realize there's difficulties. You realize there's challenges. You realize there's things you don't know. 
And then you start to question whether or not it's for you. You have multiple things uh, having a war on your focus, don't you? And, and you, as you're going for it, you start wondering whether or not it's going to be worth it. Ideas pop in your head that, why did I even start this? Do I even really want this? And there's tension. Many times the tension that we feel, we, we can't handle. And so instead of following through and seeing it into completion and making it happen, the path of least resistance is just to go do something else, to procrastinate, to heal, to relax, to have a holiday, start a different project. You see that? The tension's too big. So we go somewhere else. And then guess what? The grass seems greener. And then we do the germination and it's all, and then we start. And then after a while, we don't go through. I believe many people have a massive problem with following through and completing. Following through and completing. And this used to be me. In fact, my father uh, once said to a business mentor of mine, he said, if you can just get him to stay focused on one thing for longer than a month, I'll invest in it. <laughs> because I always would get moving and then I would realize that it was much more difficult than I thought. And then I would see this other business and I didn't understand the problems in that other business. So I'd go start that. And then I'd get to a certain point when I found the hard part of it. And what I come to realize is anything worth having, there's going to be resistance. True. Who's agree with that? Who's had enough experience like that? Anything you're really going for, you know, there's things you won't know because it's something you haven't had before. There's things you've got to work out. And it's part of it. It's part of it. You've got to follow through. So, so many people have a problem with assimilation. They have a challenge with assimilation because of the misguided ideas in the germination phase. They come up with ideas. They think about something fun and then actually applying it. They don't follow through. They don't see it out. You know, they like the idea of um, having a business or being a coach or having financial freedom. But, you know, when it actually comes to putting it into action, in, in the sign of the first amount of conflict, uh, any feeling of uncertainty, uh, any negative feelings. In fact, I've got, I've got a little bit of a list here uh, for people. Some people at any sign of conflict, stop moving. And any time that there is conflict with another human, they stop. Uh, another, another reason, any time that they don't know what to do, they stop. If they don't know, they stop. They just, they just did, they did set stop. Another one is any time that they can look bad. If they think they're going to look bad or silly or a beginner, they stop. Another one is if they fail, they stop. They absolutely stop. Next one, if it actually takes sacrifice and actually takes, you know, them doing more than they are willing to, they stop. They stop, they stop, they stop, they stop, they stop. And, uh, and I know that, uh, that a lot of you on here have had this challenge as well. So I want to address it today. There is, a, there is an absolute war on your, um, on your focus, a complete war. And I, and I want to talk about that because there's so much to creating what we love. So, so write this down, okay? Every single moment is creative. Every moment is creative. There's not a moment that's not creative. Every single moment is creative. Form follows thought, okay? Every single moment is creative it, it doesn't always go your way as you're moving towards an end result what is the one thing that's constantly moving is your current reality so your current reality is always moving it is always shifting and then what we must learn to do is to keep one focus on where we want this to shift to you see that if we shift this we move our fulcrum you see, I want you to imagine that the metaphor that I brought in uh, last week, which is the trampoline and the bowling ball. You, where you put that bowling ball is where everything will keep moving to. But if you keep shifting it to other places on that trampoline, 
you, you know, you, you know, you being the tennis ball or the golf ball, you're going to move here, then it moves, you're going to move over here. And, and so, so form follows thoughts, but guess what's even more important than that is, is form follows, a thought follows focus. So form follows thought, but thought follows your focus. Where do you focus? Where are you focused? So, so as you're in these end results you want to create, current reality is continually shifting continually shifting every single day there is something that's different that's not the same as yesterday there's there's so much going on and the, and this war on your focus stops you assimilating if you buy into all these other focuses does that make sense it pulls you into all these other focuses there's only one focus you should have and that's the end result that you're creating whatever that is, and taking the action towards that. But most of the time, our focus is in many other places, many other places other than that's what I'm creating and that's where I'm going. It can go everywhere. And as it goes everywhere, you scatter your energy and you scatter your focus and you take little actions all over the place and you, you don't get through what you need to get through. And it's it's really important. So, so there, there's this, there's this, this common theme that I see people start with excitement, get moving, and then as reality hits, excitement dies. And it's actually a lie we tell ourselves in the germination phase. In the germination, when we're coming up with the idea, we romanticize about how great it is. You know, we romanticize about it and we make it into this amazing, great thing that it's going to be. And, and that's actually uh, very destructive to, to moving forward to it. See, once you arrive at it, say a million dollars in your bank account or the health or whatever, there's not much has really changed. You know, a lot of people, they romanticize about having an amazing body and, and how great it's going to be. They get all excited when they get there. They're just the same person, just look different. You know, but they make the money. They're just the same person with the same family, the same friends, the same everything, just more money in their bank account. You know, I remember I used to have this idea that if I had in a, had this amazing business, all this money, like I wouldn't do anything, you know, like I'd have freedom. And then I got financial freedom and I was so bored. <laughs> I, I retired for two days and was like, this is absolutely boring. I want to get back to doing something. You know, I want to be engaged in creating stuff. And, and so it's, it's very interesting. So the first place that uh, we, we must get into is telling ourselves the truth about the creation and, and not taking it personal. See, when we take it personally, we make it mean more than it actually is. We make it bigger than it actually is. Make it a million bucks. You're going to be the same person. Promise. See, so write this down. This is very important. Money only solves money problems. You're still the same person. You still got the same. It only, money can only solve money problems. You know, and, and that's fine. You might have some some things you want to, but that's all it solves. You know, and, and uh, health only solves health problems. There's still everything else. And I know we don't use the word problems in, in our work, but you guys get the point, right? M money only gives you money things. It doesn't give you other things. Health only gives you health things. It doesn't give you other things. And so we put a, um, a, a misguided uh, um, idea of how great it's going to be. And this is, this is one of our challenges because as we all know, our identity doesn't want things to be different. So as we start out and we say how exciting and amazing it's going to be, as soon as it's not exciting and amazing, we stop. And this is what's happened to my friend. He wants everything to be amazing and exciting. So what's the only thing that's amazing and exciting? Starting things. So he just, as soon as it's not exciting, then we start the next thing. And you know what's even more exciting? Telling me all about them all. And I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this. Oh, what does he tell me? He's in crypto. He's done NFTs. Uh, oh, he's oh, he's also he's building a retreat, and he's dead set on all these things. Anyway, and so, so all of these things because he needs his his uh, his unconscious is being trained to be excited, and I think this is something to consider. You know, you hear these ideas about being super positive or do all these other things instead of being in it, being truthful with it. Hey, being truthful with how is it actually going to be? Well, it's going to be pretty much like this. And I'll have that in my account. So there's a war on your focus. And the first war that is waging on your focus is, is, your, uh, is you. Is you. 
The first war on your focus is you. And the, and the first thing we've talked about is that, uh, you, you know, you're out of emotional alignment with how it's actually going to be. The second way that you wage a war on your focus, okay, is that w- what you do is you have an unconscious pattern you're trying to resolve. You have an unconscious pattern you're trying to resolve. And so your focus isn't on what you want. It's on trying to be perfect. It's on trying to belong. I see a lot of people who haven't realized that they've actually got the belonging pattern. Belonging is about trying to fit in. And uh, the belonging pattern means we never do anything if we're going to feel rejected, ever. And, and we don't like when other people leave and, and you know, the belonging. So do you belong or insignificant? So, so the war in our focus is we're not going for it. We actually don't want to look bad. You see, many of us have the unconscious pattern of we need significance. And so we always somehow attract drama in our life because drama means I'm valid, I'm significant, I'm there. And so so first off, the war in our focus is from ourselves. The war in our focus is from ourselves. It will have you focus everywhere else except what you want. Second is uh, is news, the news. I I think it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, I love you guys in the United States, but I just think it's amazing. Two months ago, you you stopped one war in Iraq, and all of a sudden, now there's another war that we need to focus on in Russia. It, uh, you know, and it's probably all true, but isn't it amazing that there's always something? So there's always someone that's not doing the right thing that we need to tell off. Is it? Like, where are my Americans? Isn't that kind of funny? You know, I mean, I get it. It's real. You know, they, it's a, it's a real thing. But I just think it's the. Uh, the coincidence that we exit one and then now there's another one. It's too close for me not to think, hmm. And, and so, so first off, there's, there's, a, there's a war on our focus. You know, uh, we, we can't really go anywhere without someone uh, telling us, uh, you know, their views on things, you see, telling us their views. There's the, there's the people in the conspiracy land who only ever see it their way. And we'll never, ever, ever actually have a rational thought about the other side. And then there's only those who see it exactly as the as the uh, the collective uh, consciousness and media tell them who won't see it that way. There's very, very few that are able to go, well, you know, I'll do this or I can do it. They can jump. And, and so there's this war of other people's opinions, isn't it? There's a, on your focus, on your focus, there's other people's opinions. Hey, it's just... It's always there. Other people's opinions. So there's your internal system. There's news and media. Then there's other people's opinions. Those you care about. You know, you tell them a choice or a goal and and they give you their opinion of it, you know, and you care about them. You don't, you know, you can't not hear them. So you hear them. There's a war on your focus. Then there's your emotions. Then there's your emotions. Your emotions. So your emotions aren't reality. Your emotions are, are just just simply a warning system of good and bad that your unconscious is communicating to your conscious. They're nothing to do with reality. Just because you feel scared about doing a video has nothing to do with the fact that you've got to do a video. You know, it's, it's just not true. Then there's your beliefs. The beliefs that you have or beliefs that you hold about whether something's going to work or not work. I put out a post on YouTube the other day and I said, you know, you don't have to be positive to create. And someone um, actually who was in this group, um, you know, it was a good discussion. And they said, well, Chris, actually, um, no, you need to you need to feel positive to take action. And I said, well, that might be true for you, but it's not like that's not a rule. In fact, I know millions of people that don't have to feel positive to take action. And so there's there's these rules, there's these rules. And so just just really, really consider this for a second, is that there is a complete war on your focus as you're going to create how many things are trying to pull your focus and say, hey, this is important. Hey, this is important. Hey, have you considered this? Inflation's at an all-time high, right? How many? How much of this is going on? And I think it's very important that you you need to be able to know the current situation. And so, as things shift and change, you need to know. You do. You need to know what's going on. You need to be aware. You need to know the current reality, and then you need to also know how to refocus. You see, because a lot of those things are outside. You know, as Stephen Covey would say. 
you know, your circle of influence, you know, like you, you can't really influence them. And, and I think Covey had a great message. He, he drew three circles. He said, you know, in the middle is your, you know, your area of focus. You have your area of influence around that. And outside of that, you have your area of concern. And your area of concern is stuff you're concerned about, but you actually can't influence. And so it's nice to be aware of it, but but what can you actually do about things that are in just your area, your, your sphere of concern, stuff you might be concerned about? And how much does that take, you, take your focus away from stuff you can influence and what you really focus on? And so as you're creating, you go through the phase of coming up with the idea, you know, germination. You then assimilate and you work your way through it. You are going to spend most of your time in the assimilation phase, right? Let's say you want to become a digital marketer. You know, you want to, you want to start a digital marketing business. In the idea phase, in the learning phase, it's fun. And then you get started. And then you've got to, you know, you get started, you get some clients, but then you've got to work with those clients. And then some of them don't pay. And then this, and then that thing happens. And you've got to hire staff and all of these things to finally get there. In that time, there's going to be so many things that could pop in, as I've shared, your beliefs, your emotions, your unconscious, your over-exaggeration of how romanticizing the, the idea, uh, other people's opinions, uh, news, all of these things. And so as a conscious creator, it is your job to notice it all, observe it, rise above and refocus. That's your job. Being a, a creative warrior, being a conscious creator, isn't about ignoring it. It's just not about losing your conscious focus to all of these possible things and coming back to what is it that I am creating? What am I focused on? What am I going to do? What is important? Does this make sense, everyone? What is my end result? Because once you get through that assimilation phase, the final phase is completion. The final phase is completion. And you, and you get to complete. You get to say, yes, I completed. I finished. I did it. You get to climb the mountain. People say to me, Chris, why bother? Why am I going for, why are you building a, a hundred million or billion dollar uh, company? I said, because that sounds like a great mountain to climb. And you ask other people, why do you love to dance? Why do you love to, to climb that mountain? Why do you love to sit on the beach? They look at you like, well, because I just like to sit on the beach. And, and that's the key. You get to complete and you get to finish. You get to say, I did it. I did that. That's it. And I want you to really get that. That's it. You're still the same person that you were at the bottom of the mountain and the top of the mountain. You just had something that's now done. You see? And... What I've noticed is that there has been a enormous amount of misguided information about how we can trick the universe. And I explained this last week, how we can somehow trick the universe or try to fake it out or, or, or manifest it without doing anything or get into some weird vibration and it all just shows up, which is just not how it is. It, 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 the truth is, is you're a powerful creator. There's all sorts of stuff in the way and you, you get to create it. You get to be the one with the paintbrush doing the painting. You get to be the one that writes it. But if you don't sit down and write the book, you don't become a best-selling author. Does that make sense, everyone? Like that's the important thing is that you, you get it. You get to be the person that climbed the mountain and say, hey, I did it. I did something cool. You get to be the one that made the great family. You get to do that. You get to do it. And you get to look back and go, man, that was a hard climb. That was, you know, that was, that was something, you see, and that's it. Nothing, that's it. The way you are at the bottom of the mountain is the way you are at the top. You see, and, and that's so crucial in this is that you, you just literally become it now. You literally become it now. And I'm so thrilled to be talking you through this because right now I feel like the war on our focus is at an all time high. And it's very easy to get sucked in or pulled into all of these other things. And, and, uh, and, and here's what's interesting is as all this war on our focus is out there and all this chatter, 
Do you know what also is true? There's still the same amount of capable humans that are on the planet that were on the planet three years ago. In fact, we've had massive breakthroughs in all sorts of technology and all sorts of amazing stuff. We're, we're, you know, we're the same, but but there's so much chatter. And what, what we need to do is get ourselves back into that focus and go, okay, what am I creating? Because I believe, and I want to share it with my favorite group on the planet, which is all of you guys, obviously, is that right now I believe that we're in the final stages of this, this shift or or at least past the middle, the middle part of it, at least. So we've probably got a good year, two years until we're completely out the other side. Those who come out the other side uh, in the places that they really want to be are going to be creators. Are going to be the ones that didn't buy into all of this and get sucked all of their energy everywhere else, 100% are going to be the ones that have gone and, and created and it's probably going to be a little bit difficult but those who build the muscle in this uh conscious creative gymnasium that we're in are going to be the strongest when you know things get normal it's very 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 important to share this today because you know you're building a coaching business right now the world needs you the world needs you all of my coaches on here certified magnetic mind coaches right now people are losing their focus and their emotion more than i've seen right throughout the whole time to be honest it's 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 really 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 wild out there and they need to understand conscious creation they need to they need to do it it feels as though uh the handouts that governments all gave to soften the blow has moved <laughs> and now everyone's starting to see see it for sure so hey i'm really i'm really excited uh about that hey really excited about that so you you do need to have a, a process that you get yourself into, you know, this way of being. Does that make sense? You need a process. If you don't have a process to be able to observe the reality that we're in and refocus, guess what's going to happen? There's way too much uh, things that, can, that are catching your focus. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? If you don't have a way to point your focus where you want it, what's going to happen? Everything's going to take, you're going to go on these crazy, like you're going to go everywhere but where you want to go. You're going to go whichever has the strongest structure, whichever has the strongest, whichever bowling ball on that trampoline is the heaviest, that's where you'll go. That's what will happen. And so the most important thing is your, your 10 to 20 minute daily practice. Most important. Now, if you've been in the program for a while or if you're, if you're brand new, uh, either way, we updated lenses and we updated it a while ago. Lenses is the best process for turning big picture reality into your ap absolute day. It starts off with orienting choices, which are the, the core four, and, and those choices point you in the right direction. You can have them now and in the future. There's true choices, which is things you'd like to see manifest, like a beautiful house or an amazing relationship. There's a desired reality, which is one step towards your true choices. So maybe you want to um, be able to own the, ho the house of your dreams. So reality is you need to manifest the deposit. Maybe you want to be uh, married to the love of your life. The next reality might be to, to meet them. <laughs> uh, and then you have a 30-day uh, milestone, if you like. Some people do like that. I, I actually don't like 30. 30 moves too, is, is too short for me. So you have the desired reality. Then you have what you're going to do this week, okay, weekly planning, and then a morning ritual. And so what I find is, is most people love Magnetic Mind. They love coming to it. They love coming to the sessions. And they skip something that's really important, which actually is, is, uh, is doing their lenses and setting their life up, right? So the orienting choices are very important. And what I do with these every single day is I just get into the emotion of this end result. Actually, Mel's, would you put this document straight into the chat box here? I see some people asking for it. This isn't every single person's um, Magnetic Mind University, and um, you can print it off if you like. 
Okay, it's a very great structure. So what I do when I first start is I get into the orientational or orienting choices, and I'll do each one of these for maybe 30 seconds to a minute, okay? So I choose the end result of a life I love. I choose the end result of being the predominant creator of my life. I choose to experience myself as healthy and vital. And then I choose my true nature and purpose, okay? Why do I do that? Why do I do that every day? And why do I recommend that you do it every single day? The reason why I do that is because every single day, I know that I've been bombarded with all sorts of other people's focuses. And I want to tell my consciousness every day, this is how we're going to do life. And it teaches your unconscious or, or subconscious, doesn't matter what words you use, it teaches your unconscious and subconscious how you're going to do life and what's important. This is just as important, well, this is more important than brushing your teeth or equally important. It's, it's, it's the same. If you're not going to instruct your consciousness, then who's instructing it? I tell you who, the news your friends, you see, your fears, your worries. Does that make sense? So you choose it. So that's the first thing. And I'm going to take you through exactly how I do it in a, in a second. Okay. And by the way, there's a full training on this. So I'm just going to do it. The, the next thing is, um, you know, you, you get out your, your, um, your other choices. Now, does everyone here have a few choices that they're committed on creating other than their core choices. So I have mine printed out and they are, they are, they are right here. I'm printed out every day I go through them. And this is just a, a, a quick um, roll call. You need to get choices. So the first choices are my orientational choices. Okay. Then my next choices is what I'm creating, okay? The difference between orientational choices and true choices is orientational choices point your consciousness in a certain direction, okay? You say, I, I, and you point them. Orientational choices you can have now and in the future, okay? Your true choices are things that you want to create. So like a house or a relationship, which you might not have right now. Does that make sense? That's the difference. So what we do and what we, we coach you to, to do is to have about, you know, three, four, five, maybe six choices that you're actively engaged in. Now, I've got a little rule, and I'm going to share this rule with all of you. I never, ever, 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 ever write down a choice that I'm not 100% categorically committed to completing. Does that make sense? I never write down anything that there's an inch of doubt that I'm, I'm all in on, ever. This, the, you know, my choices are sacred. I'd rather have less choices than, than, than teach my consciousness that what I write down, I don't follow through on. There is an absolutely massive problem with writing down something you choose and then not seeing it through. All you do is you, you teach yourself that you don't actually care about things you write down. There's a silent instruction that says you don't care about the process. You see? Uh, I've had a question. What if you change your mind? You don't. You see it through no matter what. And the reason why you always see it through is it's more important to see it through and teach your consciousness that you're a person that sees it through than it is to, to care if the result's right or not. Does that make sense? So maybe you write it down and you're going for it. And maybe you say, I'm going to start a blah, blah, blah business. And then you're moving along. And you think, oh, I don't even really know if I want it. It might be right. You don't want the business, but you should still bloody complete it. Because by completing it and starting the business and having it and having clients, 
you followed through. And then you learn next time you say, right, I'm going to make sure I'm definitely sure on what I'm going for before I, before I write it down. Does that make sense? It is crucial to be someone that follows through. Crucial. It's the biggest instruction that you can, uh, that you can give to your, to your unconscious. Absolutely important. Absolutely. So you write down your choices. Okay. And so, so obviously, you know, in lenses, I'm not going to go through lenses. You can break it down. I'm going to go through the morning. Okay. I'm going to go through the morning. So I'm going to assume you all have orientational choices and then you have some other choices that you're 100% committed to, to choosing and having. Now let's just examine the word choice. The word choice doesn't say wish or goal or dream. It's saying you're choosing that to exist. Out of all possibility, you're choosing it to exist. You're choosing it to exist. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take you through and we're going to do a morning together. Does that make sense? Sorry, I know it makes sense. Does it, are you happy with that? Give me, give, me, give, me, give me some feedback. Should we do a morning together? Do we, I'll take you through the morning. We'll do the morning because I, I know it's something we always need to be reminded. Let, let's, let's do a morning. You know, Imagine we got to wake up in the same household. We come down and I'm there in your kitchen saying, right, let's do choices together. <laughs> let's go <laughs> okay so so we'll do choices we'll do some choices all right so what i do when i first i first wake up is before i'm going to go do choices or or anything else i want to make sure i'm well hydrated i know i've just spent um you know a bunch of time dehydrating really um, I normally have a, a green juice. I just use one of those powders. I want to make sure I have nutrients in my body. I want to be feeling good. Uh, I know other people might do a little a little walk or a bit of exercise and those sort of those sort of things. I do for sure. I want to move first and and that. And and this is just that you teach your body. Wait, you wake up, you feel good. And uh, what you're not going to see in here is, um, you know, scrolling on your social media or um, jamming up some some caffeine into your body straight away. Allow your body just to, to be there, to feel abundant. But I like to put nutrients in and, uh, and tell my body, you know, that I'm nutritious, I'm hydrated, and then I go, go for a little bit of a walk. Uh, once, once I'm back and, and I'm ready to go, the first thing I'm going to do is to get into the right uh, orientation, okay? And so I'm going to get into a creative orientation. And, and so, so here they are, and here's exactly as I do it. Every morning, I do the four orientational choices, and then I do two others, okay? So here's how I do each of the orienting choices. I just go into the emotion of them. Okay, so we'll do it together. So the first one that we're going to go into is that I choose to live my true nature and purpose, okay? So when you're ready, we'll do it together. So I just close my eyes. So just close your eyes. And as you do, choose it. Say it in your mind as I say it out loud. I choose to live my true nature and purpose. What would it feel like to live my truest nature and purpose right now? To be a creator, what would that be like? If I was already in my true nature and purpose, how would I feel? How would I go about my day in my true nature and purpose and just step into this reality? I choose to live my true nature and purpose and notice how it feels. Brilliant. Done. Open your eyes. That's the first one. Done. So always, that's all I do. I choose it. I've oriented my consciousness. Second one, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. This is choosing to be the one that's in charge of what you're creating. Okay. So you ready? Close your eyes. Say it in your mind as I say it out loud. I choose the end result of being the predominant creative force in my life. I choose to be the creative force. I choose to be the primary creator. Notice how it feels that you are the creator. How would you choose your day to go being the predominant creative force in your life? How does it feel to be the one in charge, in control? 
I choose the end result of being the predominant creative force. And it feels like what? What does it feel like? What images come with this? I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. And it feels like what? I feel like a train on a track. I feel like an action oriented maniac on a mission, results focused. That's how I feel. You can open your eyes and come back. When I step into that one, I just, I just feel like this outcome driven, results oriented maniac on a mission that is completely dead set on what he's creating. And, and whenever I go into that choice, I always just come out like, like, you know, I'm the archer and there's the target and it's going there and there's no question. It's done. It's determined. It's inevitable. I'm the predominant creative force. Let's go. That's how I feel. Let's go. That's what, what we're doing. Let's, 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 let's go for it. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Okay. So the next one is uh, I choose the end result of health and vitality of health and vitality. You guys ready? So when you're ready, uh, go ahead and close your eyes and make the choice. Say it in your mind as I say it out loud. I choose the end result of health and vitality. I choose health and vitality. I choose it. I choose to experience myself healthy. I choose to notice all the ways I'm already healthy. How would it feel right now to be healthy and vital? The picture in the mind of your body, what would it feel like? How do you look when you're healthy and vital? How do you feel? What do you do? How does your body move when you're healthy and vital? What's it like? I choose the end result of being healthy and vital. And how does that feel? I choose this. Choose it. Out of all the options in the world, I choose to be healthy and vital. Notice how I already am and continue expanding that. What I get is a picture. I see a picture of my body with like a shimmering light around it, just glowing with its vitality. And, it, and, and I got a smile on my face and I know that I'm, I'm able to do everything that I want to do. You can open your eyes and come back. I choose health and vitality. How do you guys feel? How was that? So that's three. So the last one, life, uh, a life I love. I always do this one last. I always do. I choose the end result of a life I love. I always do this one last. And, uh, and the, the reason why I do this one last is because it fits right into my other choices. It gets me the most motivated. It gets me the most motivated. There's no way to do it. I see um, Leonardo uh, saying, I do it first. There's no right way. They're all good. I'm just saying I do it last. Okay, so when you're ready, uh, we'll make the last choice. Go ahead and close your eyes and make the choice. Say it in your mind as I say it out loud. I choose the end result of living a life I love, of loving the life I live, <laughs> whatever way you do it. What's it like? I choose the end result of um, loving the life I live and living the life I love. I choose the life I love. Hmm. What do I love about life right now? What do I love about what I'm creating? What would I love to create? How could I feel in love with my life even more? What are the things I would love to do? What am I excited about? What am I grateful about? I choose. I choose this. I choose to love my life. Mm. I choose to create a life I love. What could I do today that would just fill me with more love for my life? What could I do now, how could I feel? I choose the end result of living a life I love. And it feels like what? How does it feel? Close your eyes, choose it, be it, see it. Open your eyes and come back. I love it. It's my favorite one. It's my favorite one. How's that, guys? Good? Okay. Uh, hey, Charity, nice to see you on. So I choose it. 
I choose those four. That's all I do for those. You don't do a current reality for the orienting choices because the orienting choices can be felt now and in the future. Does that make sense? Why do we do this? We teach our consciousness how we want it to be. Who feels good already, by the way? Give me a yes. Who's done, who, who feels good about it? Hey, you must do this every day. If you don't do this every day, there's a war on your focus. There's a war on your focus, your, your past, your patterns, your, your friends, your parents, your teachers, your other, your, your kids, society will take it. There's no, there's, no, um, there's no need to do a current reality because you just get in it. The current reality is you in it. You already love it. You're already in it. Yeah. All right. So then I choose two other choices. And, um, and I do two others. So, so look, I don't know. I've, I've been chatting to you guys a little bit here, but who thinks it's taken, what, three or four minutes to do these choices? Maybe, maybe five. I don't know. It doesn't take long. I enjoy it anyway. So I just sit there. I do those. And uh, so normally I've done those and I'm normally about this excited. And, uh, and then I think to myself, right, uh, I'm going to go get my book um, because, uh, or I'm going to, I'm going to get my day plan and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go into my other, my other choices. I'm going to go into my other choices. And so I have a list and you guys should all have a list. Okay. And um, I have a list and you should too. I pick two choices I want to work on every day. If you uh, pick one every day and you have seven choices, then you'll do one a week. If you pick two a day, um, you'll do, and you have seven choices, you'll do uh, two a week of every single one. So what I do is I, I just pick two, and then the next day I pick the next two, and the next two, and the next two, and then start again. And I work on my choices with the wisdom process, the wisdom process. Now, in the lenses that we've put in here for you, which is also in your back office, there's a, there's a meditation that goes along with it, okay? But it goes through our five steps. What would I like? Where am I now? How does it feel? What's in the way? Remove it, take action, okay? That's it. I'll do one choice with you right now because it'll take me a little bit longer since I'm taking 300 of you through. Does that sound fair enough? Okay, so we're gonna choose a choice. We're gonna choose a choice when it's chosen. When your choice is chosen, uh, type in a number one. So what I do whenever I, I choose my choice, so uh, my choice I'm going to work on is I've got a new book that I'm working on. New book completed. That's my choice. And I always do a little circle around it because uh, I like thinking that it's a point in the universe that's already created. So uh, a new book. Okay, that's, that's my new choice. All right, and so, so we choose it. We choose it, and, and, that, and that's it. What I want you to do is we're going to close your eyes, and I want you to experience it as completed to teach your unconscious exactly how it's going to go, okay? So go ahead, close your eyes, and choose it. I choose the end result of. Choose it. I choose it. The feeling of choice is it already exists and you're choosing it. You're plucking it out of all possibilities and saying, that is what I'll, I'll create. Choose it. Now that you choose it, experience it as true. How does it feel? How does it feel? Mm. What would it be like to have that? Teach your brain and body what it's like. You might make notes. Sometimes I make notes when I'm making this choice. I write, oh, it feels like this or it's like that. Choose it. I choose this. What would, that, what would it be like? How, how would you be? What would be happening when you've chosen this? Boom, done. Well done. So that's chosen. That's a point in the field you're saying that. Next. But now, so what's it like now? What's it like now? So now, now, so you've chosen that. Now you close your eyes and you go, well, what's it like now? What's it like now? What's, what's my life like now? So I'm choosing that. Where am I now? So right now I've got the idea. 
I've written 80 odd pages. So what's it like for you right now? And I want you to feel when you feel the now, feel uh, you know that it's that it's an earlier version of the end result. Like feel like it's like a puppy that's growing into a dog, a seed that's growing into a forest, uh, you know, a kitten into a cat. Feel feel that it's just this little version of, of what you're creating. Feel it connected like that. What's it like now? Boom, fantastic. What's it like now? Always experience the now, no matter how bad your unconscious thinks it is. Always experience the now like a, um, a you know, those Russian dolls, like a small, like something that's going to grow into it, that it's connected. Always experience the now, okay, is, is something that is connected to that. Does that make sense? Always feel it's connected. Sometimes your unconscious will try to experience the now and it will look like this. The now sucks. I'm stuck and I can't get out of it. And the and inflation and the, the market and, he, and he's mean to me. That's not, the, that's not the now. That's just your inner child crying. That's that's just that's just that's just stuff. The the now is the now, and it's it's a step towards the end. Even if the now looks worse than the past, it's still it's still it's still the next step. It's where you are moving to towards it. Okay, so then the next thing we do, okay, is we go into the end result again, and we we look back at the now, and we ask ourselves. What is the obvious next step? What is the obvious next step? Now, how big is a step? How long is a piece of string? A step is simply a step. It's just the next step that you get. The step might need a month to, to create. It might need a day. It might be a week. You see that? It's just the next step. If the step's too big, there'll be a step inside the step. Does that make sense? It's just a, the next thing that needs to be done. So what we do, we tune into the end result and experience it completed again. I'll guide you through, and this is in the replay, you look back to the now and you ask yourself, what is the obvious next step? Now, sometimes people say to me, Chris, I don't know what to do next. And that might, that happens to all of us. All of us don't know. At times we don't know. And in those times you don't know, you need to put on your adult trousers and take a guess. That's the truth. Because many times when you're doing something that someone else hasn't done, there isn't anyone that can help you. However, most of the time, if you don't know what exactly you should do, there is someone else that can give you a bit of an idea on what you might want to do. Does that make sense? So if you get, when we do this process or you do this process and you get, I don't actually know what I should do next. Okay. Sometimes you just need to go, well, I'll give this a go and we'll see what happens. Uh, and other times you go, I actually need to get a bit of advice. But even if you get a bit of advice, it's still, it's still going to be you that makes the decision. Never outsource your decision on what you're going to do.